Let me now ask Kevin Prindeville to join us. Kevin, Kevin uh, really is a, focuses on many topics affecting older people, but especially Medicare, which, as I mentioned yesterday, did get a lot of mention uh, last evening. Uh, he leads a gem of an organization called Justice in Aging that uh, really is on the cutting edge of advocacy for older people in this country. And Kevin has some comments to make for uh, Carol as well. Kevin's principal. Kevin. Well, thank you so much for having me here. It's a real pleasure. I'm here tonight as part of the Carol Estes uh, fan club. Um, also a part of Ted's fan club as well, uh, but tonight for, for Carol. Um, I, I'm such a big fan of Carol's that I'm actually here in violation of one of my rules. You see, about two years ago, Carol and I were on a panel together in San Francisco about Social Security and the future of the program and how to defend it and why it's important for the communities that Carol's been advocating for for her whole life. And for the last two years since then, I've been meeting people in San Francisco who come up to me and say, hey, I, I saw you at that presentation. And I ask you, well, what'd you think? How was it? And they say, well, Carol was great. <laughs> so I decided it was a bad career move to continue to share stages with Carol. Um, but for you, Carol, I'm, I'm, I'm back here uh, doing that again. Um, you know, when I, we've said lots of nice things about Carol tonight, but the three things that I think of when I think of Carol are advocacy, mentorship, and family. So first, advocacy. You know, Carol, if you know her, you know that she is a fierce advocate. She is as fierce as they come. You can tell that she's the uh, child of a lawyer and was well-trained to stand her ground, to argue her points, um, and to win the fight. Um, and, you know, she's always done that. Uh, everybody I've spoken to, all of my other mentors, um, people that have worked with Carol for a long time, they all mention her advocacy first that she's been consistent throughout her career, that she's led, as someone told me tonight, her academics get confused with her politics. She's always married those two, and she's used that to speak out for what's right, whether it's providing leadership for the Older Women's League, or the Gray Panthers, or the National Committee, or when she was on the board at Justice and Aging, she was always a voice for those that had been shut out of systems of power by systemic abuses. So always there as a champion for those voices. And she does it with this unique style. I, when I think of Carol, I think of it starting with those steely eyes and the most serious look that tells you she is not messing around and she's not gonna let you off the hook. And just at the moment when you think you're about to break, she breaks it with this funny Texas joke and that wry smile and just brings out the charm that wins you over. Um, so it's really that unique style. And when I was a young advocate, seeing someone bring that fierce kind of advocacy into rooms and into conversations was incredibly inspiring and it provided permission. If Carol's mad, if Carol's speaking up, then we should do the same. And so that brings me to my second point about mentorship. I feel fortunate to be one of the many people that Carol has mentored. And I feel fortunate to work with so many people that Carol has, men has mentored. It's like this incredible legacy that extends even beyond her own work. Whenever I meet somebody in the field who I'm thinking, yeah, this person's really cool. They really get it. They're an amazing advocate. Plus, they're a provider or they're an academic. But wow, they're really an advocate at heart. Inevitably, soon I find out that they used to work for Carol or they were Carol's student. So it, just for a quick second, if you're someone who's been lucky enough to feel like you were mentored by Carol or worked for Carol, could you just stand up for a second? So look all the way around the room. I mean, it's all different parts of the room. And these are people, if you know each of them, you know that they are leaders in their field who have mentored leaders after them, after them, after them. So it's just an incredible testament to Carol's community that she's created of people that will leave legacy uh, for years and years to come. Um, and that brings me to family. Because if you've been lucky enough to be mentored by Carol, then you're part of Carol's family. And it really feels like a family of us that know Carol, that are connected to Carol, when you make that connection that you each know and admire and respect Carol, it's like you are connected in a new and special way that will last forever. So there's that family of uh, advocates, whatever it is they do in their other job, I think first and foremost, if you've uh, been mentored by Carol, you are an advocate, um, that there's that family of us. And if you know Carol, you also know how important her family is to her. You don't have to know Carol for more than five minutes before you hear about Dusky the restaurant, 
the grandchildren, how uh, proud she is of you. And I think that that is such a powerful lesson for all of us about the importance of the family we build as a community together, but also in our lives at home and how we welcome that into our work. So thank you, Carol, for the advocacy, for the mentorship, and for family.